We have been to several locations, and one of the first stops that we made was the Mary Washington House in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Our friend and best-selling author, Michelle Hamilton, is the manager of Mary Washington House. Please bear with us as we didn't realize how bad the echo was in Vanessa's apartment, and I, in my infinite wisdom, forgot the adapter for the external microphone. But nonetheless, here it is, Sidebar Sessions. Episode one. Like talking about the museum world, the first tour guides and historic properties were African Americans. Uh-huh. The first tour guides at Monticello were African Americans. The first tour guides at Mount Vernon were African Americans until they, the whites came in and pushed them out. You heard Michelle correctly. All of the first original tour guides were African American. Now, see, now, what I find fascinating about that is considering the time frame, considering what their rights were, mm-hmm. you know, previously, or lack thereof, or, or lack thereof. How fascinating is it? I find that, that amazing. <laughs> that the upper crust of society would give them that type of responsibility. When it comes to portraying yeah. the upper crust, yeah, oh, gave them the responsibility, but then took it away. It, I mean, I guess it goes back to like the same situations, like mammies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Is you know, you were perfectly fine having an African American woman as a wet as a wet nurse, as a wet nurse raising yeah. your children, and everything else. But heaven forbid, they. They walk in the same circles. They can raise your children. They can tell your history. You you entrust them with yes. those responsibilities, but heaven forbid you allow them to practice their own religion, wear their own clothes, have their own last name, share their knowledge of history, that their ancestors. Thank you. Mm-hmm. To me, that's fascinating, and I can't understand. The hypocrisy <laughs> of it, I can't, I can't understand the thought process that goes behind it. I, I can't either. I was absolutely astounded. And, I mean, I, you know how much I love history. When okay. I first met, I mean, I was all, all about history, and, and as you are. And my father taught me a lot about history, a lot of stuff that we're not taught in schools. But this piece of information absolutely blew my mind. I've been on several historical tours in Williamsburg, I mean, over in Ireland, I mean, absolutely. You know, and I have never heard this piece of information before. Because heaven forbid, you know, it, it showed that they were educated or well-informed mm-hmm. or uh, courteous or anything other than what they would have been considered at that time. Yeah, I just... Uh, kudos to Michelle for that piece of information because I'm blown. So what else I found interesting during our trip at the uh, Mary Washington House was that when Michelle was talking about, well, actually you brought it up first, the paint. Miss mm-hmm. Mary was, <laughs> she was adamant. She was, <laughs> she was letting us know mm-hmm. it was wrong. It was wrong. <laughs> All kinds of wrong. Okay. Um, she did not care for it. Jeff. It was. It lended itself to a prissy tone, and she's not prissy. If I'm seeing it correctly, because she told me that the paint color is off. I know it actually needs to be slightly darker with a touch more gray. Okay. <laughs> I know. Yeah, because actually, um, and she knows the same gray, slightly darker with. Right. There's yeah. there's actually a funny reason why Colonial Williamsburg paint originally is off color because they didn't take in fitting. So when back in the 30s when they were peeling back and they found the paint, it, it looked like this because it had faded, uh-huh. and they had taken into account fading. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. as 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 as, as, as um, they were you know studying the research the actual um, materials going into it, they're realizing over time it does face. They've been thinking about uh, And okay. the somebody's out that high. So that's what they think. I mean, that makes sense. So for her to come through 
so strong on something that most wouldn't consider a big deal, but to her it was because presentation was everything. Oh, Preservation true. was everything. Oh, it's and her home. Yes, and accuracy. Please. Uh, but when it comes to the paint color, she was uh, disappointed as a strong yes. word for me. So I'm, I, I don't want to say that because the effort is definitely being made. Well, it's not just there. Her. It's all the colonial Williamsburg and everything else. The, the, the hues and the blues and grays and greens and all that. We learned through this venture that the colonial colors as we know today not so much. are not the colonial. <laughs> well, life has been a long time. <laughs> I know, right? Oh no. She'll be back. She'll be okay. The lies! <laughs> Never. <laughs> Lies, lies, they're all lies. <laughs> any, any who? Are we okay? You know, we know how she feels about the door. Oh, the door. <laughs> it was actually kind of funny when you and I first walked in that room because I, I don't think the camera really caught it. But when you and I first walked in the room, we both just looked over at that wall and went. <laughs> at the same time, because it was almost like she was like. Girls, girls, you see that that is that is wrong. Wrong. <laughs> that wrong. Yeah. In front of it was like a bureau. It was, it was, it was, it was a, like and, a wardrobe it, or an armor. Yeah, armor. it's it's like some type of a, a, a big hutch type thing, mm -hmm. which wasn't yeah. ugly or anything like that, but it seemed out of place. Mm -hmm. And now we know why. Yes. <laughs> Go. Want to do the cracker? Is there any way to just put the thing on to I I want to. We're we're, we're, we're talking about eventually when we just just go back and for a longer. I I would and just. Yeah. Yeah, just, um, just put up a fake one, just to appease her a little bit. Well, there were great strides and efforts to be made to try to match these things. It's not an easy feat. Oh, heavens no. It, it's not an easy feat, and, and neither a cheap venture either. No. Um, so when you go to these places, um, Mary Washington House or any of these other historical areas, even if they don't charge to get in, most of them have donation boxes. Please. Please, even if all you have is a buck or two, you know, put it in. Put, drop it in the box. I don't care if you got a pocket full of change. Perfect example. Drop it in the box. box. We went to another location that I'm sure we will have an episode on later mm -hmm. where uh, there wasn't anybody there manning a a donation box or, or, or charging it was on the honor out. system. It was on the honor system. People, please have honor. Um, we dug through my car and found a bag of change. The blessings had been in there since my trip, since our trip, driving from Oklahoma to Virginia mm -hmm. to move here that we had used for toll. Yep. And we took that whole bag and dumped it straight in to the donation thing. It wasn't any skin off our bag. Mm -hmm. It you was know? probably, what, 10 12 dollars Give or take. Easy. And easy. And quarters and stuff like that. But it wasn't doing us anything. It was just sitting in the vehicle. And like most people, we didn't really have cash on us. Most people carry cars and all. So that's something else we need to get in the habit of is trying to keep. Mm -hmm. when, you know, when you know you're going to be out about doing these type of things, keep a keep a few bucks in the vehicle. So when you see these donation boxes, drop them in the donation. And some we did find out. Um, if you go to their website, and please be gracious enough to do so, if you go to their website, they understand that a lot of people don't carry cash anymore. Mm -hmm. So they actually have Venmo or PayPal or Cash App or whatever that you can place your donations in that way. Please don't look at that as a way to get out of doing your part because they're not asking you for money for themselves. They're asking you to help with preservation, with upkeep, and to keep areas like this nice and clean and welcoming for those who want to learn more about them. Mm -hmm. 
And I think the least we can do is aid them in doing so. Absolutely. Already, already cleared it. I already know exactly how to handle this. So during this filming, when we have to do interviews, <laughs> or interviewing ourselves in regards to locations that we've been, we're doing this in my living room. And it's a beautiful place. I absolutely love where I live. I love my apartment. It's very heavy. But I have that living above me. So you're going to hear stomping around, you're going to hear the moving the furniture, there's going to be other craziness that I'm sure will happen. Please disregard as non-paranormal. Is this so area... Be paranormal if I go up there. Yeah. Is this area haunted or having paranormal activity? Yes, it does. And yes, I have it in my apartment, but not coming from above me. So, with that having been said... Walls. These brand new walls. Shoot. 
children. They're getting a good start at it. True story. Well, maybe if it was a flip flop, or we could like slide it in through. <laughs> da, da, da. We might be able to fix that in through one of the uh, vents, and then kind of slide it down in. Oh, yeah, it's real. Oh God. <laughs> Project. Oh Jesus. <laughs> she would do it. You guys think she's crazy? <laughs> this is normal. Okay? This is my life. <laughs> right here. This is and this. This and this. You do nothing. <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, we need pizza. Okay, we're gonna cut this short because Mama hungry. <laughs> but we'll be back with more. Yes. Bye. Bye. So when we were in the gift shop area, yeah. Well, first off, when we were upstairs, Michelle was notified that a sponge was found <clears throat> on the floor of the gift shop area. And it was funny because they had just mentioned earlier about stuff being moved around in the gift shop before mm -hmm. we went upstairs. So when she heard about this, she was like, oh, we'll, we'll head down to the gift shop here shortly. When we walked in there, the sponge was laying on the floor. I took photos of it. I'm trying to make reason how the sponge could have, you know, maybe table got bumped or maybe, you know, something... No, because the type of jar that these sponges are in is like one of those. It has the lid on it. Yeah, it's like one of those big, like, um, um, uh, they all cookie jars. Yeah, I was trying to think of a way to describe it. And it was huge. Um, and the top of it is like this big around, but it's got that curved look to it. And it wasn't knocked over, nothing around it was disturbed, but this one sponge out of many in this jar is laying on the floor. Like six feet away. Yeah, I mean, it was it, it was a good distance, um, as you saw in the, in the photos that we provided in, in the episode. And they were talking about the floorboards in the gift shop. And they're talking about how the gift shop area was actually added on years later, and this, that, and the other. And it was something about that wood floor. And wood, I believe, is a very good conductor. It is. And they did energy. say that that wood was used. It wasn't new wood. No. It was repurposed. Yeah, it was. It was in another part of the structure. I believe. I believe is what they said. Yeah. And then it was used as the floor in the gift shop. So they said that George Washington, Mary Washington, all these people have graced upon this wood where it was at before in the other part of the structure in one fashion or another. In one fashion or another. So I am knelt down. Get my photos while Vanessa is talking, getting, you know, doing her communication, doing her, her reading, and I take my hand and I touch the floor. That's not all I remember until Loper, I think, came around with the camera or something. So you see yourself on film snap at it. Yeah, it's like, it's like I just, I, I come around. Yes, wife and daughter in front of prison. Ooh. A lot, lot of anger. A lot. And still, it destroyed Adrian's health. That's his life. Okay. And I looked over at Vanessa and I was like, just by the energy in the floor, I kept feeling a, like a, a push in a pool, like, you know. It's like a lot of push in a pool. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much. And, well, if you go further on into the video, well, Michelle comes around the corner and she's talking about, well, yeah, you know, we'll come in here and we'll find books. And they're usually right through this area. Well, it did not dawn on me until I was doing the editing just last night that the area that she was pointing out was the area that I was feeling all of that energy. Yeah. And went into that 
little bit of a trance, if you will, before I snapped out of it. Usually they just play with the books. Yeah. Usually we'll walk in and something like I'm here will be like right in the middle and nothing's been knocked out. But it's usually it's right in this vicinity. Yeah, it's always, it's always here. here. Well, it's it's here. Yeah. And Vanessa and I were sitting here talking about it earlier, and that was like, you know, she never knew anything about this individual. I didn't know anything about them. Michelle had already said no other medium has ever picked up on this person. You know, Marquis did something. Um, and holy moly did he come through. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something, what did I was just talking about? I want to touch base on this for just a moment. Uh, because we've been to many locations. Anyone who's going to watch this has probably been to many locations, you know, both known and unknown. We prefer the, the lesser known, if at all possible. Uh, but we're still, you know, getting our feet wet in, in, in other ones as well. Uh, there was so much online information on some of these really well-known places. And I've stated this for years, I want to say this for years, if you hear the same stories over and over and over and over again coming out of a specific location, start to start to question. Start to question the not necessarily the validity of the haunting because I don't want to disrespect any spirits, no. but but start, you know, uh, really questioning the validity of those that are that are giving these messages because there are it isn't just the layers of history. To, to areas, it's the extended family and friends of the people involved or attached to these areas. My understanding is this person that I that I was that was coming to me so vehemently mm -hmm. and wanting his story told about him and his wife and his daughter was was closely tied. Like I don't know if that was it or not. Was it? Not yet. Okay, we need to double check. We'll double check. I, I can't say for certain if he was ever at that location, but he was closely tied to the Washingtons, and with us being there, he recognized somebody he could converse with, and decided to basically, you know, bombard me with a cacophony. Of information that I would have not had any access to whatsoever, would have even known to look for it. That's when you're talking about mediums and psychics and sensitives and intuitives and everything else. Look for for those type of instances. Look for something that not only isn't unbelievably well known, but look for stuff that can be validated on the spot. As this actually was. Uh, much to my surprise, because I didn't fucking know who he was. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, because we were astonished with the information that was coming to Vanessa and with the way Michelle was able to validate what she knew about this individual. One right after the other. After because the other. she even said, um, I, I think she said in the episode, she was like, well, I'm, I'm not um, a specialist on so-and-so, but I do know this, this, and this. So she was able to give us some validation and between her and her mom knowing some of the things that transpired between the Washingtons and this individual, um, being able to get that validation and to hear them say, no other medium, no other psychic has ever picked up on them before, that was astounding to us. And like I said, it didn't, I was so focused on that that I did not even realize my little connection. No. But um, your push and pull that you were talking about was the fight that he was talking about. The struggle. The struggle. And when I put my hand there and I went to the zone and then I snapped out of it and then Michelle was showing me the area where they typically find the stuff. It was right there. Well, I had my hand. Something. The energy was pulling me into it. Yeah. Like... I think they were trying to tell me something, but I don't know what. And I told Vanessa, I said, but the funny thing is, Michelle said, sometimes they'll be a sponge. They'll pick it up, they'll put it back. Or they'll come in there and they'll find some of the books, you know, down, laying on the floor or whatever. I can't help but wonder if the pushing and pulling was not only that, but you were getting, but maybe a pushing and pulling amongst the spirits or entities there, almost like their own little turf war. 
Could be. Then someone throws a sponge, it gets picked up, well, I'm going to do better than that, so they throw books down. You know? Oh my God. You know? I challenge you to a duel. Yes, it's like the paranormal version of the face line of the world. Yes! No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, to me, that's what, yeah, now that I'm looking back at the footage and everything, I'm like, I'm wondering if they're actually having their own turf war, if you will. I, it's very, it's a very real possibility. <laughs> it is a very real possibility. If you guys are cut it out, it's over. Exactly. Okay. It's been, it's, it's been a minute. Been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a tidbit of footage was discovered. Unbeknownst to me and to everybody else. Now, I wasn't even in the building. Now, when you go out behind the house, there's a little, like another little house that's like a, a work area, a, a, a shed of sorts. And that, that was in the episode as well. And you walked in there to continue your reading of the shell. And while Vanessa was talking about the activities and stuff that she was getting that had happened in, in this tiny little quaint structure. Something was captured on audio, but it wasn't an EVP, it wasn't a disembodied voice. No. But it was an unknown sound that, and you guys know how I debunk the crap out of stuff. I cannot debunk this. You no, know? and Michelle Moore myself even registered at all on film that it was even heard. I do not remember this sound. It shouldn't be had for other people's ears. But in a positive manner. Uh, I have my own personal opinion. I have two separate things I think it could be. And I'm sure Gwen has her opinion on what she thinks it could be. We're not going to say those. We want y'all to see what you think it could be. And if you think it's nothing, more power to you. If you think it's something, more power to you. We we don't do this to prove paranormal activity to anybody. We don't care. But we'll give you a hint about this sound. We feel it's residual. Yes. It's not intelligent. I don't know. No. It's not intelligent. No. I feel it's residual. It's no. part of the daily activities that probably happen in this structure. Agreed. And when I was reviewing the footage and I first heard it on the headphones, and I was like, whoa. And then I noticed you nor Michelle never waited. So yep. that told me they didn't hear yep. it with their ears. No, and had we have heard this with our ears, we would have It's that it. loud, people. It's that loud. Yeah. And I was astounded because normally if something is evident, so obvious, the camera operator, which in this case was Loper, he would have noted if he had bumped into something, if he yep. had moved something, if something had shifted. You hear on the BPI episodes all the time, verbally marking, that was me. That was my, you know, that, that was my elbow hitting this, this that, that, that was the mic brushing against something. Mm -hmm. Oh, hell, we're just a coach thing. In this particular building that we were in, that is the building where they were trying to find the keys to be able to take us upstairs and the keys disappeared. The keys disappeared. Don't know where they went. Nope. And it's not like Michelle. Well, this was the first time I ever met her. But I can I can assure you, just by meeting her, she is not the type of person who's going to be in charge of caretaking a place like this or would even lose her own keys, much no. less keys to a building like this. The epitome of response. Oh, she is. And attention to detail. Very, yes. very, very precise and very punctual with everything. Mm -hmm. And when neither she nor her mother could find the keys, mm -hmm. that rattled her a little bit, I think. Now, that almost makes me question now our just seconds ago claim of a being residual. <laughs> that we'll have to see. This is why we have these talks. Yes. Because we're like, well, maybe it was residual, and the more we talk, and then we start putting other pieces together. I totally forgot about not being able to find the keys. And just to give you an idea of the 
power is not the right word, but the importance behind this place and, and how it sticks with you and how it's necessary to keep locations like the Mary Washington House and others um, to keep them from going to ruin. Okay, there's such, there's such an important part. There was a, a contractor for the Mary Washington House years and years and years ago who had been working there and had actually found artifacts, okay, had found things, buttons or whatever it was that he had found. You're common everyday items. You're common everyday items. They were actually found, I believe they were working in the basement of the cellar area, I think is what it was, and he actually, 20, I think, I think they said 20, 20 some odd years after finding these, um, he, I think they said he had fallen ill and was, and was, you know, he, for some reason these had remained on his mind. He returned them. <laughs> yeah. He returned them to the Mary Washington house. Um, whether that is for a, a superstitious reason, whether it was just out of courtesy, whether it was out of guilt, who knows, doesn't matter. But that's something, y'all. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you picked up an item somewhere t from 20 years ago, would you think to take it back? I don't no. Don't know if I would. No. I, I know a lot of people be like, they would just rebury it or, or give it to somebody else saying, oh, this was found at so-and-so, you mm -hmm. know, just to give it that extra significance that it, well, that it, it is, just to be able to chuck it off on somebody else. And but for him to actually return the items. I just that was to me one of the most fascinating stories. Mm -hmm. That yeah. really was. That touched my heart because I'm like, yeah, man, that's that and that's important. That and I'll tell you another story that I don't we did we, we didn't capture it on video. But her mother was telling me that they had an investigative team there on and uh, they were doing their thing, you know, and uh, asking questions and so forth and so on. And, uh, towards the end, uh, they were doing, uh, I believe she said it was a baby concession. Okay. And it was towards the end, and uh, Michelle's mom uh, was asked, was there anything she wanted to ask or anything like that? Something along those lines. And she says, uh, now mind you, all this was being recorded on a digital voice recorder, to my understanding. And she says that uh, they were trying to reach out to the uh, servants of the home. And uh, Miss Mary Washington, she ended up uh, passing away with breast cancer. And the last, I guess, several months of her life, as you can imagine, especially during that time of cancer, it was not easy. Uh, they didn't have the treatments and stuff that they do today, naturally. And uh, she was reaching out to these these servants, these these slaves and servants that had taken care of Mary Washington. And she said, "We just want to let you know how much we appreciate all of the work, all of the love." Everything that you did for our Mary. And she said there was a brief pause when they were listening on the playback. There was a brief pause. And all of a sudden you could hear play this day. Thank you. Uh -huh. That probably got to me more than any other story. We heard a lot of stories while we were there. Oh, yeah. yeah. That one got to me more than anything, and I'm going to tell you why. These were the unsung heroes. Absolutely. These were the ones, these servants, these people were the ones that, behind the scenes of the revolution, and the, the, all these battles and illnesses and everything else, and not only were they carrying their own burdens for what they had to deal with, 
they were carrying the burdens of other people uh -huh. that were leading the country, that were paving the way for the country. Because you know that the country they, at the time didn't include them. Didn't include them. A country that technically, really technically didn't exist quite yet. It was shortly after the revolution, into this first presidency, that um, is when she had got got the right deal in the past. As These well. were individuals that carried the burden of so many. So many. And we're back. Evidently, somebody doesn't want us to talk about this. Vanessa, my battery's almost dead. I had almost a full battery. Uh -huh. uh, real quick before it dies, tell them what land we're on. <laughs> Y'all, I, 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 I live pretty much on land where battles were fought. Yes. Of course, this is Virginia. Yeah, we are the fault everywhere. So yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, my brand new place is right on top of it. So the recording has been fine this entire time until we started talking about the servants at the Mary Wash and yes. wanting to thank them. And wanting to thank them. So whoever the racist bitch is that keeps fucking with my camera. Ghost, you can cut my camera off all you want. I will have to find the same. Screw you! You're racist freak. <laughs>